One in eight women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. This is the current statistic. In the 1970s, it was one in nine, and it fueled the beginning of a national health campaign organized to increase awareness of the disease and raise funds for the cure. Since 1985, the month of October has been devoted to breast cancer awareness. I will be exploring how breast cancer is blatantly appropriated by companies like Dyson and Target in 2007 that pinkwash products to capitalize on visual representations of breast cancer to support conventional standards of female beauty. In her book, Cancer Journals, Audre Lorde states, women have been programmed to view their bodies only in terms of how they look and feel to others rather than how they feel to themselves. Women are surrounded by media images portraying women in essentially decorative machines of consumer function. In comparison, I will examine how Joe Spence, an artist living with breast cancer at the time of making this work and died in 1992, rejects the conventional vision of female beauty while illustrating her own mortality and body image in the series Pictures of Health from 1982 to 1986 and her series Narratives of Disease from 1990. In this comparison, I argue that supporting the positivity of the pink ribbon culture perpetuates stereotypes of how the female body is accepted and subverts the patient's personal narrative, leaving us with a tyranny of cheerfulness. The Dyson and Target ad on the left is, de is designed to preserve conventional ideals of how the female body is to be read, which is apparent when we compare it to the Singer vacuum cleaner ad from the 1950s. Both reinforce heteronormative idea of the woman's place is in the home. Each ad incorporates whiteness, youth, thinness, and urban chic as core examples of the ideal female body. Both of these women have the state-of-the-art vacuum cleaner to keep their perfectly manicured home tidy. Note their shoes, which are not exactly the best shoes for cleaning. The white Maltese at left, a reference to domesticity, returns the viewer's gaze. It's wearing a pink bow, the icon for the pink ribbon culture. Social scientist Gail Sulik states, the pink ribbon symbolizes breast cancer awareness, but also functions as a summarizing image of a multitude of shifting meanings. In the context of the pink ribbon culture, the ribbon refers to core American beliefs about optimism, scientific progress, generosity, and the ability to rise to any challenge. I am not for any moment insinuating that raising money to cure breast cancer is anything but positive. And I applaud nonprofit organizations that are fundraising to support this research. However, corporations do not distribute notification when they have reached their capped donation amounts. In this promo at left, Dyson and Target were promising that for every Dyson DC 07 vacuum cleaner sold in 2007, they would donate 10% of the purchase price to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. This leaves the remaining 90% as profit, and when the cap is met, 100% gain. Further, I would argue that this call to action patronizes the ill and diseased women that is supposedly benefiting because of its narratives of positivity through consumerism. The phrase pinkwashing, coined by the grassroots education and activist organization Breast Cancer Action, located in San Francisco, this term is also used in LGBTQIA community, but in a different context regarding political and public rela relations strategies. In the US and other countries, the context of pride parades and, or, and other modes of support for the LGBTQI agendas, the pink dollar diverts attention from human right abuses. Within breast cancer community in the United States, Hume pinkwashing refers to corporations that control the broader public conception of, pink, of breast cancer, obscuring environmental and chemical causes of the disease, some of which they are directly linked and responsible for. In 2012, Avon leveraged the pink ribbon to advertise their breast cancer research initiative, Breast Cancer Crusade, to fight the war on cancer. 
Avon is strategic in this ad with respect to playing on the emotions of the customer by naming their shades of lipstick, courage, hope, faith, passion, and honesty. I would argue that this deployment of the pink ribbon perpetuates the anti-feminist idea that a woman has to be carefully packaged and made up by a conventional standards to be acceptable. In 2011, just one year before this ad came out, Environmental Justice named Avon's Kiss Goodbye to Breast Cancer campaign as one of the company's most poignant instances of pinkwashing. It was designed to raise funds for breast cancer research but many of their shades of lipstick were suspected of containing hormone-disrupting ingredients linked to causing breast cancer. The use of the pink ribbon is ubiquitous. How many different ways can we fight this disease? Is it with the football, pink football attire from the National Football League, who is supported by American Cancer Society, funded by AstraZeneca, largest creator of breast cancer drugs, bring awareness? Or perhaps painting 1,000 fracking bits used by Baker Hughes that damage land and release cancer-causing toxins can help as they support Susan G. Komen. Or the pink buckets for a cure from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Or is it your place, Save Lids for Cancer, that contain hormone-altering chemicals linked to causing breast cancer? This campaign benefited Susan G. Komen, who also threatened to defund their support of Planned Parenthood in 2012 that conflicted with corporate sponsor ideals. Clearly, the Burst of Thunder 380 Breast Cancer Awareness Kit can help fight the war on breast cancer. <laughs> corporate sponsorships for nonprofit organizations demonstrate who has the power in marketing, namely not the person with cancer. Joe Spence's work, with, which predates the pink ribbon culture of walk, run, races for the cure, is an alternative to the constructed positivity of the pink ribbon culture and ad campaigns. Her staged self-portraits explore illness and reject the conventional vision of female beauty and that the pink ribbon culture reinforces. Here we see the artist herself nude, her white aging torso contrast dramatically with the fit white woman you recall from the pristinely crafted Dyson Target ad. She gently holds the ribbon in her middle finger and thumb. The breast and the booby prize written on the side of the ribbon are asymmetrical and cartoony. At first glance they look like eyes staring back at us. To keep our eye on the prize is a goal and the awards are noble. However, this is a prize for monstrosity, which I will discuss is seen as unknowable. This is a prize for the diseased. It acknowledges that patients living with cancer are given labels such as survivor. It invokes the reality of knowing that you are not in control of your diagnosis and the anguish of realizing that the treatment you are about to undergo to save your life is harmful. According to Michel Foucault, the medical gaze refers to the construction of the body as an object of visual scrutiny within medical science. From her series, A Picture of Health, focuses on infantilization, denying maturity, and treating someone like a child. Spence does not possess the power of diagnosing or expunging the tumor that is growing in her breast. Through photography, Spence is documenting her own experience, just as doctors document an illness, only here, she is controlling the visualization of her body through her own eyes that are staring back at the viewer and her own narrative. Spence rejects any attempt to make this easy for the viewer, as we have seen in the pink ribbon culture. She has not applied makeup. She is not smiling. She does not beautify this moment of contemplation. Illness becomes narratives very quickly. In her book published in 1978, Illness is Metaphor, Susan Sontag discusses how metaphors associated with disease stigmatize that disease and the ill. Building upon these ideas, in 1997, feminist theorist Jackie Stacy wrote Teratologies, a cultural study of cancer, which discusses how disease is perceived, experienced, and how it is a cultural phenomenon. 
According to the Oxford Dictionary, teratology means the scientific study of abnormalities and abnormal functions. The prefix terato means relating to monsters or abnormal forms. The origin of this word is Greek, teret, meaning monster. The suffix elegy is medical jargon that means a branch of knowledge. If Spence is interested in putting herself in as the subject of study to contend with her disease, then she is equating herself to being a monster in this series. Here we see Spence nude, with the exception of the word monster written in an arc above her breasts. The word indicates conflict, not only regarding how she perceives herself, but how she will be perceived by society. The hint of the mask is reminiscent of the Phantom of the Opera. By opening her medical gown, spreading her arms, and exposing her body like a flasher to an unsuspecting crowd, she reveals the difference in her breasts. This is the body the pink ribbon culture cannot sell. We return to the plush, cozy, authoritative chair that declares the power of pink. The chair ref references the corporate boardroom and the patriarchal power of administration. These are the powers that are actually control and limit women, whether they are knowingly selling them harmful chemicals for consumption, or withholding the option to reserve birth control, or wielding a Foucauldian power of knowledge of the disease and authority in diagnosis. I propose we should think before we pink. In Expunge, Spence shows us precisely the area that was removed from view in the Dyson Target ad, namely the diseased breast, making breast cancer visible. This challenges the naming convention of survivor by instead awarding herself the booby prize and naming her doctor as co-artist. The Pink Ribbon Campaign proposes that women must always be happy, even in the face of their own mortality. This tyranny of cheerfulness put forth by the Pink Ribbon culture with the omnipresent pink products are condescending and harmful to people living with cancer. The battle and survivor terminology leaves us with what Jackie Stacy calls a, a story of heroes, victims, and villains. The Pink Ribbon's culture space of constructed positivity denies the alternative narrative that is anger of the disease. Thank you.